Welcome to your market update and charts of the day. It's Wednesday, the 19th of June. It's Mike Smith, Senior Analyst at Go Markets, with your daily meander around what's happening today, uh, which may be a quiet day globally in comparison to some, but maybe this is the calm before the storm. We're ramping up uh, on Thursday and Friday. But let's uh, let's look at today. And of course, we saw U.S. markets inch higher again. Uh, all four major indices ended up positive, although very slightly so. Those new highs for the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 were records once again. Um, Nvidia outperformed, helping both of those to the upside. U.S. markets are closed today for Juneteenth Day, and uh, so we will get uh, a reduced trading volume, as well as uh, the stock market being closed in the U.S. Uh, U.S. futures are trading around neutral in early Asian trading, Asian equity markets, generally higher. Uh, but the ASX is near neutral in early trading. Um, energy stocks, the outperformer, on the back of strength in oil overnight again. European futures are pointing to a cautiously positive open at this stage. And on the FX front, the U.S. dollar index weakened slightly overnight, though it does remain range bound. Uh, gold is still stuck under that 23.30 resistance, having another test today in Asia. Copper is holding support, and as I said, oil followed through on the previous day's gains by pushing over that $80 level and hitting the end of April levels. The fact that it's over $80 is possibly a little concerning in terms of the impact on inflation, but we shall see whether it holds where it's at now. It comes with an interesting mover overnight. It's breached the bottom of that 66 to 70,000 range, which it's been in for some considerable time. We're not getting a continuation of selling Asia yet, but it'll be interesting to see what happens when the European markets open. See if we get a further down move down towards 60,000. This stage, not on the cards, but worth keeping on for sure. With the US markets closed, uh, there is very little data out as well. Uh, Japanese trade balance numbers are already out and showed a slight gain on what was expected. The major data out today is from the UK, where we've got both CPI and PPI later. Uh, tomorrow does ramp up, as we've already intimated. We've got the Kiwi GDP. We've got central bank action from the PBOC, the UK, and the Swiss National Bank giving their rate decisions. German PPI and, of course, US weekly jobs later in the day. So lots to digest for markets tomorrow. And Friday is a big PMI day with manufacturing data coming across the wires throughout the day from various parts of the planet. A couple of charts that caught our eye today. Tomorrow could caught our eye. We're pushing back hard towards that 200 level. We haven't been here since the middle of March. But you can see we tried really hard to push through really since the back end of Feb, right throughout March without success. So we're heading there again. Uh, for context, just on the weekly chart, you can see the importance of the level, this level. And if we do get a breach, then possibly a move up to 210. So around about a 5% gain. One really worth keeping an eye on over the next few days. In the FX world, the Aussie US is looking quite strong on the hourly chart. You can see yesterday's post RBA action, although we did see a move in rates. We saw a relatively hawkish press conference subsequent to that decision. And we look as though we've got quite a clean run up, possibly to test this 67 level. A little bit of pause as we uh, hit the midpoint of this Asian session after really what was quite a perky start. This is probably worth checking out uh, during the course of the afternoon. Uh, and if we do breach uh, these high wicks of the day, up to 67. Trade safe and see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.